Hello there and many thanks for keeping us company. This is Y254. Why in the morning, my name is Dereva Hillary. And as we had mentioned earlier in this discussion, Monday Health, we are talking about the young voices on future scenarios and contraception. I'm speaking to Andrew Awiti. He's a strategy consultant and from Nigani think tank contributor. We want to see why did they choose the young people and why is it that they want to see our population is being controlled in uh, regards to what was discussed and one of the implementation uh, outstretched from the uh, ICPD 25 that was held uh, last week. Now, uh, Karibu Sana. Thank you, Larry. Thank many you thanks for having, for having me. Now, uh, I have seen some of the articles uh, or one of the articles you have done. I've seen the report and I have seen some stats uh, in regards to what you, your findings were in the field. And just to bring our viewer into a perspective of this, uh, in Kenya, 74% of the population is under 35 years of age, according to the National Council of Population and Development. Now, for this reason, the youth bear the biggest brunt of the impact from all policy decisions made, which are currently a cause for concern based on myriad of development indicators which is high maternal deaths of 6,300 women die annually during pregnancy and childbirth, with unplanned pregnancies being a major contributor. Now, school dropouts from pregnancy rates at 13,000 girls. Uh, this is very alarming, and youth unemployment is at 80% uh, under 35 years of age. Those are the youths. Now, all linked to contraception access. And this begs the first question, Awiti. Mm -hmm. Now, what do, what do you think Kenyans want for the future, or for their future rather? I think what Kenyans want from the future, in particular the youth, is a chance to control the narrative with regards to where they're heading, mm -hmm. how they can get there, and how they can co contribute towards achieving this future that they want. Mm -hmm. um, the bulk of that future basically involves realizing the ambitions they have for their lives and for the children they plan to have. Exactly. Yeah. Now, there has been a narrative for a longer time that uh, the poor people are the most who do not know how to control uh, the population in terms of bringing up children. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing 80% of young people are unemployed. Would you contribute or would you say this has contributed to the high number now because we stand on 47? I, I don't know whether it's a good number to speak of or it's <laughs> not, but now we have a big number of young people out here. Do you think other than looking for a job and uh, making sure they are busy, they are busy elsewhere? Um, well, where we are right now is because of a number of decisions we have made in the past, um, basically from the 70s, 80s up to now. Mm -hmm. um, we have not planned our resources to take care of the population that we have. And this, and this cuts across not only unemployment, mm -hmm. but also healthcare, um, education. You have schools that, that are very crowded. Mm -hmm. um, and the most visible outcome mm -hmm. currently is unemployment, because this is what contributes to a number of the ills that we have in the country. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at this conversation about the poor people are the ones who are unable to um, basically dictate the number of children that they have. This is largely a systemic issue of unmet needs. Mm -hmm. um, you will find that healthcare outcomes currently are largely favorable to those who have the money. Mm -hmm. And this is not a situation where we want to go into, we, we, we want to maintain going into the future. Mm -hmm. For, and the outcomes are very uh, clear. You look at counties like Turkana, West Pokot, um, and Mandera. Contraception access in those counties is less than 14%. And the population that is living below the poverty line in those three counties is over, six, is over 64%. Um, compare that to counties like, say, Kirinyaga and KC, for example, whose contraception prevalence rate is over 60%. Mm -hmm. Less than 34% of their populations live below the poverty line. So that disparity in access um, contributes quite a bit to how um, the development in various areas of the country 
comes about um, not only in the counties but also the impact of this on women. As you've mentioned, you have 13,000 girls dropping out of school every year. Mm -hmm. Where do these girls go, go to after they have kids? Right. Um, we don't exactly have a program to bring them back to school after they have kids. Mm -hmm. So they're left to their own devices whereby you find a number of them, um, they decide to pursue other forms of employment that don't really enable them realize their full potential. And, and it goes back to where we started with this conversation. Mm -hmm. Young Kenyans just want an opportunity to chart the future exactly. that they believe is ideal for, uh, for them as, in, as individuals. And currently as it stands, they tend to fall off the wayside because of a number of things that are beyond their control, but are clearly systemic issues mm -hmm. that we need to resolve. All right. You, you just mentioned uh, Trukana is one of the ASO counties. The conception of the information, who do we blame for lack of, if any, of the information relayed about contraception and controlling childbirth from those counties fan flung? Um, you know, that, that's, that's a very... It's, it, it's quite complex to approach that because um, the the constitution guarantees um, access to the best quality healthcare mm -hmm. to every Kenyan. The Health Act in 2017 um, guarantees um, safe, effective, and affordable co contraception to Kenyans as well. Um, mm -hmm. If you could not make, please. We have envisioned the importance of contraception mm -hmm. with regards to achieving our development objectives. But what is happening is there is minimal implementation in certain parts of the country. Mm -hmm. um, this is largely a systemic issue that stems back from um, the, margin the, margin the marginalization that was there be before the counties. Mm -hmm. I would not want to look back at how we got there. Right. We are in a position to change the future. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say we must look at how do we change this. Because um, as we found out in our report, mm -hmm. um, there are four outcomes that the country can take mm -hmm. based on how we look at contraception. All right. um, we can either stagnate or we can be worse off. Mm -hmm. um, we have scenarios where the health sector is private led. Okay, we'll be speaking about the, the, the scenarios. But now, those areas are part of which you want to have our nation in the Vision 2030, the SDGs. Mm -hmm. How do we include everyone on board and how, how do we ensure the young people have been incorporated to ensure that we achieve our goal come 2030? We are just 10, 10, 10 years away. Yeah, to 10 years away. Yeah, so how do, we, how do we have everyone on board ensuring that uh, from the population control to how we use our economy to mm -hmm. how we develop our nation in line with the Big Four agenda as we speak? Um, the first thing we need to do is to ensure that there is a clear understanding of um, the role that contraception plays mm -hmm. in development. Mm -hmm. um, we need to get the national government um, to buy in into the idea that a number of the things that you're proposing will not move if you don't have contraception as a key pillar for your development. The same applies um, for the devolved units. Um, these are the governors mm -hmm. and also the individuals. Yeah. Um, kind, kindly hold your mic from the middle part. Up, up. Up, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Um, also for the individual. Mm -hmm. um, now, for a long time, contraception has been viewed as one, a, a women's only issue, mm -hmm. and two, as a private issue. Mm -hmm. But then, they, based on our think tanks, we got to realize that this is a personal issue with national ramifications. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at other so-called personal issues that we have tackled as a country, it places contraception as one of the most important things. Look at how we addressed the, the AIDS crisis. We realized that it was co causing us a lot in healthcare and also the debts were very high, but yet it is a, it is a personal issue. Um, we reworked our systems to adapt to the challenge and there was a decline in new HIV infections and so on. This now needs to be extended to family planning and contraception. Um, the impacts of this are that a number of our girls are not achieving the future they want to achieve. Um, a number of our counties um, are not developing as fast as others. How do we ensure equitable and sustained 
and a development for all Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We need to tackle this issue of contraception. Right. Uh, at now, I, I have to ask, why did you choose to deal with uh, people from the campuses? Because I have seen you have chosen a number of campuses within uh, this, the Nairobi County. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose the young people from those areas? Yet we have other areas maybe, is it because they are so proximate or why did you choose them? Um, one of the main reasons why we were Okay, so our project, um, we were looking at Nairobi and, and Bungoma. These are two very uh, distinct counties in terms of um, the demographics, mm -hmm. um, how they are impacted by various um, a, a decisions from either the national or, 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 or county levels. Mm -hmm. um, and also, well, for the universities, Nairobi has a lion's share of um, universities. Right. So it was kind of a straightforward decision to go with that. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you look at other countries in the world, you, uh, the universities play a major role in moving the country forward. And this was what Kenya used to be um, a, a while back. The universities were able to shape the agenda of where the country is going. Right. And the universities are, are some of the most prestigious um, halls of information in this country. Mm -hmm we have not as a country um, taken advantage of the wealth of knowledge, the wealth of ideas mm -hmm. and the power of youth in those institutions. Mm -hmm. And for Form Nigani, because um, we are a platform that is um, that aims at channeling the voice of the youth towards key issues, uh, most importantly contraception, mm -hmm. we thought that this was an opportunity to bring back that glory right. that our universities had and use them to um, come up with ideas on charting the way forward for our country. All right. Yeah. Now, having uh, dealt with them, maybe you could highlight one of the challenges, maybe or two, and uh, how have you decided to solve the problem? With regards to the university. The findings, yes. Or the findings. Yeah. The findings from the report. Right. Um, the findings from the report, one of the most glaring ones was low male involvement mm -hmm. with regards to contraception. Um, one of the studies that we incorporated in the in the report to guide our thinking um, was one from a Kilifi clinic, mm -hmm. um, where of the 20 women who came in for contraception um, information and methods, only two were accompanied by their husbands, and still of those 20, um, 10 chose to leave their cards at the clinic because they didn't want their husbands to know that they had gone to oh. seek information on, on, on contraception. And the others who took their cards went and had them filled at an antenatal clinic mm -hmm. to give the impression that I had gone to check with regards to issues of, uh, say, a child we are expecting. Right. Um, that issue of low male involvement mm -hmm. uh, stems from a society that is largely patriarchal. I mean, if you look at um, our administrative units, the bulk of the governors um, are men. All the presidents we've had are men. Um, most high-ranking officials are men in this country. Um, and the perception we have, the, the framing of the, co of the contraception conversation has been that it's a women's issue. Um, now, we are trying to break those um, myths and misconceptions by bringing in all youth mm -hmm. to have this conversation. And um, one of the ways we are doing that is through the universities um, that we are engaging in the Form Nigani Ideathon. Um, currently, those intellectual spaces, it's very hard to keep the men away and just have a conversation uh, have a, and, and have a conversation with just women. And that involvement of men, I guess, will go a long way into um, shaping the narrative on on, 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 on contraception access in Kenya. Mm. Yeah. All right, now, how would you say the reception is in as much as you're trying to engage young men and boys to ensure that uh, the barbaric and archaic things of the past and the culture, cultural things are not affecting the contraception uh, knowledge or the information with the women? They are not now holding back. They are included. How is the reception so far? The reception so far from the universities has been good. Um, I would not like to assume that it's all gravy right now, mm -hmm. that there are no issues. Mm -hmm. um, we still have to keep um, chipping away at the barriers 
to making this an all inclusive um conversation mm -hmm. and um yeah we are trying to get more men involved in this conversation mm -hmm. um at the policy level um at the youth level um and also at the administrative level mm -hmm. yeah and w what are some of the barriers you could point at uh, so far what you have experienced and uh, maybe the way forward some of the few challenges you've gone through um from the perspective of youth mm -hmm. um it has been very minimal but then we also have to be aware that we are in a country with um various cultural beliefs which i presume will be a challenge we have christians we have uh, muslims we have traditionalists and there are some uh, some elements of conservative um thinking that may not be very positive in trying to move this conversation forward um the best we can do right now is i guess amplify the voices mm -hmm. that are um calling for the rights that we have in the constitution to be met mm -hmm. yeah now uh despite the awareness created and the modern methods of contraceptives we still have a number of women who are not into this what's the way forward what have you planned because they're still holding back mm -hmm. what's your plan um our plan is to have the youth engage mm -hmm. and um this what has happened is um over the years we have slowly relinquished um our role as active and engaged citizens in this country um which has allowed us to be subject to myths and misconceptions and misconceptions about various issues um i i think when starting with the importance of of family planning and contraception at the individual level and the impact this has on um your family your society your community once this is clear we intend i mean we expect to see a certain shift in thinking um of course this is with various uh partners in co in collaboration of course there are individuals mm -hmm. who need to um understand this issue um there are uh, policy makers there are advocacy partners the these three form a triad that can have this core conversation and hopefully shape the future all right i uh, know that you 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 you're into young people so much so but now this, it's one thing to have the information and it's another thing to utilize that information. Yes. You're speaking to the young people. How about the current generation of our parents who are there? How Are these people becoming the ambassadors or you're planning for the generation to come? How about these people? How are you dealing with them? We are largely planning for the generation that will form the future, mm -hmm. um, which is what Form Nigani is about. Mm -hmm. um, our, our parents, we can say that part of the time is gone mm -hmm. um they had they are they are they have had their kids they've learned their lessons they have seen that ah i can't afford five kids i need to stop mm -hmm. but then do young guys um have that thinking in mind or is the system um enabling them mm -hmm. to make those uh, decisions so that that is the best place that 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 you can focus on mm -hmm. because most of the current statistics that we have um uncovered mm -hmm. um in the report largely affect the 74 percent of kenyans who are kenyans under the age of 35. Mm -hmm. so i would say that would be um the biggest place where we concentrate our efforts mm -hmm. yeah but, but, th but th then uh, on a lighter note mm -hmm. in the meantime these people do you think they will have done wonders before our generation come because you speak to me i mm -hmm. know tomorrow i will need to have this but then there are people who are here currently what are they doing how will we reach out to them Sorry, you just repeat that? The now, uh, I'll have the information, right? As a youth. As right a youth. now, I'll have the information. So mm -hmm. I'm wary of my tomorrow. Yes. But then, the person who is living today, in the meantime, by the time I'm coming on board, what will they be doing? How, how are you planning to reach them out and ensure they control... Them? These are the ones who don't have this information. Yes. Um, this largely involves a large... Uh, a, la a large public awareness campaign mm -hmm. i think um there are some facts that we are alive to All right. um one there are silos that are limiting the collaboration between the public sector the private sector 
and the community service sector or the advocacy partners mm -hmm. um they are not collaborating as we would like them to they have the same objectives but they are working in silos um and that limits how we manage the the information to those who actually require it mm -hmm. there needs to be a concerted effort towards achieving this goal that we all agree mm -hmm. on and that i guess will go a long way into um framing that conversation for those who are not yet um sold into the importance of contraception all right now uh contraception efforts in kenya are largely donor driven yes. and it has been internationally uh, committed and even nationally but then how do we localize this thing how do we localize and ensure even those people from far they have the information will have the meds they need will have everything to ensure that we have control it is actually quite concerning that we have relegated really a very vital aspect of our development to external parties um, and and as we speak right now there have been conversations to lower the funding that is coming from external parties mm -hmm. um, as far back as 2016 um, there was a decline of 54 percent on the amount of funding that is coming in from from the donors with regards to family planning um, now the question how do we make the transition f to being self-reliant um, one we must understand contraception from a local context um, how are kenyans seeing this issue what are the gaps in understanding that currently exist then the second and which i think is the most important thing where do we want to go as a country we have the big four agenda we have uh, vision 2030 how do we achieve those the answer to that is we need to work with one the, the, the resources that we have to take care of the population that we have um, we want to increase employment through manufacturing mm -hmm. do we have the resources to uh, to employ the 800,000 Kenyans mm -hmm. who are coming in every year from 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 universities um, we, we want to improve healthcare mm -hmm. um, what do you do about the one in seven deaths every day that result from um, abortions um, we spend um, what 500 500 million shillings every year to repair the damage from unsafe abortions um, and these are the various local contexts and the, the various local contexts and, and nuances that need to inform how we make that shift from being um, donor funded mm -hmm. to being self-reliant mm -hmm. um, again the biggest challenge is reframing that narrative to everyone um, individuals county governments and national governments mm -hmm. not because they don't understand it but because we have allowed ourselves to be uh, to be learned externally mm -hmm. now county governments and the national governments mm -hmm. one they need to be clear on whose role is or, 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 or on whose role is it to to bring x y and z mm -hmm. at a particular at, at a particular level mm -hmm. um then they also need to agree on how do we move more funding mm -hmm. into this to ensure that it is one sustainable mm -hmm. and two accessible to 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 everyone who requires it right. so those i guess are the two things that we need to do to move from a system where we are largely reliant on donors all right uh, speaking of the big four agenda mm -hmm. in line with the universal health care we have the nhif funding how how can we incorporate now the contra contraception under universal health care in in light with the nhif can we have people using their cards to access or to have the services of contraception? I think that that is a big yes, because this is a conversation I've seen happening um, a number of times in the past two years. Um, NHIF needs to be robust enough mm -hmm. to take care of everyone's health needs. Um, we need to lower out-of-pocket expenditure. Um, one of the key contributors to poor healthcare mm -hmm. is the fact that one healthcare is expensive um, when you have out of pocket costs um, going into healthcare from individuals this basically impacts on their quality of life mm -hmm. um, they say that 
there, there's a saying that most Kenyans are a medical emergency away from being poor. Mm -hmm. um, and that basically reflects on how ineffective our healthcare system has been to meeting some of the needs. Mm -hmm. And contraception is one of the many people will not um, take up contraception because I have to buy unga. Right. I have to buy bread. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot find that amount of money to take up a contraception because there are some immediate needs. And we need to move from having our, uh, having our population uh, deciding on which two uh, basic needs mm -hmm. to pick over the other. Sure. And that is where um, incorporating um, family planning into the NHF system comes in. Mm. Yeah. All right, as we, as we come to an end, we'll be speaking about the scenarios, but before then, I want you to respond in this one thing people have been saying. Mm -hmm. We've been having a conversation so much about women having to be the one to control uh, the population in terms of contraceptives. How then, apart from uh, the using trust for men, what else can we have? We can we have another method other than that? Because it has been said, it has been left for women. Mm -hmm. We start that conversation, that's for women. As in, how, how else can men contribute to this? Um, one of the biggest ways that men can contribute is accepting that they have a responsibility to this. Mm -hmm. A woman does not get kids on her own. Sure. There is a man involved, mm -hmm. um, which means that it is also your role to be a part of that, a, a part of that conversation. Um, as men, we need to be clear on our plans mm -hmm. and also involve the women that we are with. Um, I want to buy a piece of land in this number of years. I may not be able to buy that piece of land if I have to feed um, 10 kids that I cannot take care of. Mm -hmm. So it's about having your plans, um, ensu ensuring you are clear on those plans with your partner, mm -hmm. Um, ensuring that the resources you have are able to take care of this family that you are expecting or currently have. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing. Um, and also having those uh, discussions with, uh, with your wife about which contraceptive uh, method will, will work for us, will work for you. Mm -hmm. um, we have had conversations about um, the myths and, and the misconceptions about family planning and this arises from men keeping their distance from right. women with regards to that conversation mm -hmm. for example you you will hear some posting that um contraception will make your wife moody contraception will make your wife not able to give birth mm -hmm. but it's because we, we we don't know we are we are not involved in that conversation um i would go as far as saying go and visit the gyna or the doctor mm -hmm. with your wife all right learn how these things work Okay. Um, learn what is best suited for the kind of um, family you have and the wife you have in terms of her, her health mm -hmm. and her plans. Um, maybe she just wants to have, um, or, or, or rather, you as a family may maybe just need to, to space your kids. Okay. Yeah. All right. In a very few words as you conclude now, this is the last thing. How can we achieve uh, the four scenarios that is Uwakilishi, uh, Ukaidi, Utegemeo, and Upendeleo as we wind up? Okay. So um, Ukaidi, Upendeleo, and Utegemeo are the more dystopian ones, mm -hmm. which is where we don't want to go. But all the signs are there that we could head into any of those three mm -hmm. if we remain adamant about not prioritizing um, contraception access as a key driver mm -hmm. to development. Um, in Ukaidi, we are conservative. Um, we ascribe more to the myths and misconceptions of family planning mm -hmm. and therefore shun investments in it. Mm -hmm. um, for Utegemeo, we are heavily reliant on Dodona funding. What happens when this Dodona funding moves to a more immediate issue? Mm -hmm. um, what happens to to contraception, it, it, especially at a time when we are heavily reliant on it. Mm -hmm. um, the ideal one is wakilishi. This is where health outcomes are good for every individual, mm -hmm. um, whether you're poor, whether you're wealthy, whether you're middle class. You can afford healthcare, and most importantly, you have access to contraception information and methods mm -hmm. based on, of course, your needs. So it's just not access. 
but um, it is tied to the specific needs of the individual. Um, in this scenario, what happens is now Kenyans um, have the ability to chart their future. Um, I want to be a doctor. I am a 16-year-old girl. I want to be a doctor. I will not get pregnant and drop out of school. Mm -hmm. I will be able to continue my studies, become a doctor and achieve more. And the same can be said about my kids. Mm -hmm. um, I am a 27-year-old woman. Right. Um, I need to space my kids mm -hmm. to allow for my career growth. So those are the kind of outcomes we are looking for as a country with regards to the Wakilishi scenario. And the end result is that there is equitable and sustainable development across the board. All right. Yeah. All right. Many thanks for coming, Andrew, and shedding light uh, in regards to this movement that you're having. And we wish you all the very best. And we are hoping as a nation we will achieve uh, what we intend to have come 2030 as a nation. Many thanks for coming. He has been my guest, Andrew Awit. He's a strategy consultant and former Nigani think tank contributor. We were talking about the Young Voices on Future Scenarios and Contraception, where we want to see young people mostly involved in contraception. Coming up will be Alex with a Man Talk. We take a very short break. My name is Dereva Hilary. Stay tuned to I254. Any medic, uh -huh. and it's totally free. Uh -huh. And also, we have curriculum.